Well, hi guys, it's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. I'd like to get back on our subject of the finished work of Christ, of Jesus, the finished work of the cross, uh, his beating, death, burial, and resurrection. Uh, today, I want to just mine out a couple of interesting details in scripture uh, during this time. And tomorrow, I plan on taking down off of the wall in my study an artist rendering of the crucifixion, which is very, very accurate and very good. And I want to show you that. And then I'm going to wrap this study up and start teaching some other things. But today, where I want to start in this teaching snippet is right here. This is One New Man Bible, and it is written uh, or translated. It's a translation by a man named William J, I believe is his middle name. Let me check on that. Yeah, it's William J. Morford. M-O-R-F-O-R-D. And some people call him Bill, uh, but his name is William J. Morford. He took the original manuscripts in the Hebrew and the Greek, and he did his own translation of those manuscripts. So this isn't just another takeoff version of another Bible. Today I want to flip over in the Gospel of Luke, and bring out something really interesting about the walk to Emmaus. The walk to Emmaus is where there's two disciples leaving Jerusalem going to a nearby city called Emmaus. It's about an eight-mile walk, which, by the way, that walk would have been about two hours or a little better. Uh, and what happens, they're headed home for the night, right? And Jesus comes along beside them, and walks with them and talks with them, and they don't recognize him or understand who he is. Uh, in fact, they don't know who he is until he's with them and he breaks bread. And then it says their eyes were opened and they knew it was Jesus, but then he disappears. Okay, so let's talk about this today. I'm in uh, Luke 24, verses 13, basically through 35, okay? I want to bring out a couple of things in here. It, they're, so they're walking, and Jesus comes up and is walking beside them, and they're so downcast and, and negative and gloomy. Uh, and watch this in verse 18. And the one named Cleopas says to him, Are you the only one living in Jerusalem, not knowing what happened during these days? <laughs> and he said to them, Of what sort? And they said to him, The things about Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth, who was a man, a prophet, powerful in work and in word, in the presence of God and of all the people, and how our high priest and our leaders gave him over in judgment of death, and they crucified him. But we were hoping that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. But even with all these things, this third day has passed since these things happened. And even some of our women amazed us since they came to the tomb early in the morning, and they did not find his body. They came saying that in a vision they saw angels who were saying that he is alive. Then some of those of us left for the tomb and also found thus just that the women had said, but they did not see him. So Jesus says to them, O oh, foolish and slow of heart in believing all that the prophets were saying. For it was necessary for the Messiah to suffer these things to enter into his glory. And beginning with Moses and with all the prophets, Jesus explained to them with all the writings concerning himself. What's really interesting, though, even though Jesus broke out in Scripture, they still didn't know it was Jesus talking to them. All they thought is they were talking to a man that understood the Old Testament so well that he could connect that these Old Testament uh, signs and stuff was leading to Jesus. They just thought that he knew the Old Testament and how it connected Jesus. But let me go back up to... Verse 18, this name Cleopas, I want to tell you about the name Cleopas. In the original Greek, this is a female name. One of the two disciples on the road to Emmaus was a female. 
Now, some scholars believe it was both females, that it was Mary, one of the cousins of Jesus' mother Mary. It was two Marys at the cross. This Mary and this woman were walking back to their house. Some people believe that it was Peter, and it, I can tell you it was not Peter because the name in the Greek is totally different. Uh, some people believe that it was Luke and Cleopas. I don't believe that either. But with that said, uh, it was definitely two disciples of Jesus's that was part of the 70, and one of them's name was Cleopas, and that was a female. The next thing I want to tell you is that right here, if you'll notice in verse 21, they did not know that Jesus was the redeemer of all mankind. Watch this. None of the disciples understood that Jesus was redeeming mankind from the fall of Adam in the garden. They thought Jesus was the one that would redeem Israel, okay, the country of Israel, and that he would be the new ruler, and that's in verse 21. They thought that Jesus was the one who was going to redeem Israel. Okay, so let's keep rolling on this. Uh, I want to go over, and the next thing I want to show you in Scripture is uh, John. I'm in the Gospel of John now, and I'm in a different Bible now. This is my Phineas Dake study Bible, and oh my goodness, this man spent his life studying out Scripture, and he has some of the most awesome revelations that I have ever read. With that said, I want you to understand that I don't agree with every single thing that he has in his Bible, okay? I just love the knowledge content that he has. He has some really good stuff. So I'm over in the Gospel of John, chapter 20, and this is verse 21 and 22. And this is Jesus. Jesus said to them, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, now I send you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive you the Holy Ghost. I want to talk to you about this. This word breathed on them, the word breathed, is used this one time in all of the New Testaments. And I can't say it, it's emphasio, E-M-P-H-U-S-A-O. That word right there is used this one time in all of the New Testament. But what's very interesting is it's used in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, where God breathed his spirit into Adam. Jesus was releasing the spirit of God back on the earth into his disciples the way that God breathed his spirit into Adam. He was giving them God's very own life back because, see, he had already paid all of the price to redeem all of humankind from the fall of Adam in the garden. And now Jesus breathes, and it's that same word where it says that God breathed his spirit into Adam. I think that's so awesome. Well, guys, I'm going to wrap it up today. I love you, and I'm going to see you right here tomorrow on Facebook. Bye-bye.